surely you know by now that this is a running and triathlon channel with a difference because it isn't just about running and it isn't just about triathlon. I like to focus on the psychology behind everything we do, the biomechanics behind it all, all of the stuff that enriches the running triathlon experience and this week's no difference because what I want to do is instead of focusing on me, I want to focus on her for this week and where she's been at mentally and physically since the marathon uh, because I think it could benefit you if you are either leading up to a race or um, after one of your most important races and how to deal with it because we're putting some strategies in place to get Mary on track, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at the view, look at the view. Isn't that amazing? How about this for hill reps? Holy cow. So Mary, if you could sum up your training since the marathon, how would you say it's gone? I would say it hasn't. <laughs> So here's what I'm gonna do. This week, I'm gonna give you all of the tools in my toolbox of how to stay motivated in these times, whether your A race has been moved or even canceled, or whether you've just done your A race before this lockdown happened and you're struggling for motivation after. I'm gonna give you everything I can, tip-wise, to help you get back out there and get training. And I'm gonna use Mary as my guinea pig. Happy days, Mary? Yeah, as per usual. <laughs> yeah. So, I did a strength and conditioning <laughs> work. Before I give you the tools in my motivation toolbox, we might as well talk about Mary's motivation and how it's, uh, why, sorry, it's dropped off after the marathon. And it's that perfect storm, really. What are the, some of the, quickly, what are some of the things that have happened to you since the marathon? Big job promotion. Big job. <laughs> um, in a school at a time when school's closed, and we had to switch to being a virtual learning school. Yeah, so essentially Mary's been made uh, headmistress of our school, which is woohoo, but at a time when the schools have shut, they're having to adapt, the school is having to adapt to an environment it's never been in before, teaching from home, which has taken unbelievable amount of hours to plan, but also at the same time, she's just run a marathon and there is a natural drop off after a marathon. You can't focus on something for so long and expect not to have a drop off. You can't stay on that motivation scale all of the time. It's gotta be a drop off. So you were kind of a, the product of a perfect storm of, of things happening to you that has formed, uh, that has meant your motivation's dropped, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it? been really hard to find any rhythm or pattern and you just feel like, how did I run a marathon six weeks ago? Yeah. But that's a perfect amount of time to recover from a marathon mentally and physically in order to get back on it. Again. Yeah, I can't wait to be back on it. Now try and stand up. <laughs> Go on. I can't without She that. did the single leg workout yesterday. I Go on. Got... Up you go. Oh, that was easier than coming down. <laughs> What I've realised is that this video has taken a lot more planning than usual because you're only allowed outside once a day. So yesterday was our walk and that was our time out. So we've had to wait until today. But the exciting thing is that I get to show you the five best motivational tools that I use and I have at my disposal that you might be able to use in your training to keep you motivated, to get you out there. And the first one is something that I call the five second rule. And I don't call it that because I made it up. It's from a book I read called The Five Second Rule. But essentially, it is a brain override trick that makes action, the process of physically doing something like moving, override your brain's natural urge to shut things down and keep you comfortable and safe, i.e. not go running. So what you do is you get to a point where you have this urge to go running. So Mary, at the moment, are you motivated to go running? Uh... No. So what you do is if you are lacking that motivation, you have to override it with action. So what I want you to do, Mary, is in, right. I want you to count down from five. If you want to go running, I want you to count down from five. And before you hit zero, you need to get up and move. And that starts the, that starts the process. It overrides the brain. So can you count down from five, please? What? And, and go. Running. Okay. Five, cool. four, three, two. Get up. Go, 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 one. go. I'm on it. 
She's on her way at least, that's the main thing. And then I can tell you the next trick in my motivational toolbox that'll get you out the door and keep you out the door. I am trying the 10 minute rule, which is where you go out. And if you wanna stop after 10 minutes, you're allowed to. No guilt, that's okay, but you've got to give it 10 minutes. So let's see what happens in 10 minutes. Been going for just over 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Ben was right. minutes in. Oh, I just want to keep going and going. Um, I'm not going to overdo it because I had a really bad knee. So, but I'm just going to keep enjoying running with win-win and make the most of it. Verdict? Right. Yeah. You were right as always. <laughs> Well done Mary, you got out there, you did it, and that is the main thing. Let's call those two motivation tools the immediate term motivation tools because they're the ones that get you out of the door. But what you're also gonna need is some things that tie you down to training regularly, day in, day out, week in, week out. So let's call these the medium term motivational tools. And I've got two more for you. The first one, and I'm gonna show you the computer screen while I do this, something called an implementation intention and I've spoken about this before but essentially the more detail you give to your training sessions as in when you're going to do them where how long for what time of the day all of that the more likely you are to execute on that training session so you could do it for example I would do it on training peaks which I'm showing you now but you have to have a premium account which means you have to pay for it but if not, you can go back to the good old just writing it in a calendar but being as specific as possible and it will hold you to it. You're 90% I think more likely to do a training session if you've written an implementation intention than you are if you haven't. Make it as real as possible. And alongside that, kind of, is another medium term motivational tool, is to reward yourself after the exercise. And I don't mean eating chocolate, because if I did that, I'd eat, well, I do eat a lot of chocolate. I'm gonna be honest with you, I eat probably too much. But what I mean by that is, if you've done it on a calendar, tick that off in green, make it really nice and bold, and watch the green ticks stack up as you go. And if you're on training peaks, then the really nice little function is that your sessions turn green if you've completed them, if you've planned ahead, if you've done the implementation intention. That only again works if you either have a coach or on the premium function. So it doesn't work for everyone, but if you're watching green ticks stack up on a calendar, that is just as good. And it is really good motivational fuel to see them stack up. Now, Everyone's gonna miss a session or two. That is just a fact of life. We can't all train all of the time. Things happen, life happens. So you must give yourself a red cross. That is important. You can't just cheat your way out of it. But the key here, again, motivation is that your aim should always be no two red crosses in a row. It's all right to have one, but you're never allowed to have two in a row. And that should keep you honest, should keep you training. A little app I really like that gives me long-term motivation and, and helps me see my progress, which is brilliant, is something called connect stats and I'll show you it again on the screen hopefully here and it's an it's an app that's only for the iPhone I think I don't think it works on Android although I might be wrong now but it shows me all of my stats all of my sessions since 2013 so I've got seven years worth of sessions on there how much I ran in a year how much I've cycled in a year how much I've cycled per month even week and it breaks it all down for you. It takes it from your Garmin or whichever computer that you have and it basically consolidates all the stats into some really nice graphs. If you're a real stats geek like me, then I would uh, I would recommend Connect Stats. But you've also got Garmin, you've got Strava, you've got a number out there. 
But remember this is for you. Strava can get very dangerous if you start to compare yourself with other people and that's not what we want to foster in ourselves. We want to foster intrinsic motivation. Like, I don't care what other people are doing, I care what I'm doing. And my final motivational tool, and this is perhaps the one that you tie to the long term rather than short or medium term is that you have races in the pipeline that something to hold you accountable, something long term. Now I appreciate it doesn't work for everybody. Some people don't train to do races. Races for me even are just a nice little bonus at the end rather than the thing that I do it for because I love the training. But it does hold me accountable and I know that even though I am in Copenhagen this season has been cancelled already, I still potentially have the London Marathon and the New York Marathon, but even then, I don't care because I know I've got Copenhagen next year and things in the pipeline. And I've got New York Marathon hopefully this November and London Marathon next year. So having those races locked in keeps me accountable and keeps me motivated to get out there and train because I really want to get to that start line and experience those awesome iconic races. <sighs> So neither of us feel like we're drifting. Every session we do still feels like it has a purpose and that helps us stay motivated. And I hope that these tips have helped you in some way. All five of them may not be for you. In fact, none of them may be for you. But the hope is that one of these tips you can take away and implement into your training structure and it will help you be that little bit more motivated. That's what this is all about. That's what this channel is all about. That's what we're all about. Right, I need to crack on with Zwift now. I'm back on it after a week off training because of my back. I'll see you on Tuesday. Can't wait.